to the neck would wear out. You know, if you had a little bit of you could picture every night, be filled up, and she'd dab it with a Kleenex, and you know, water out, and then she'd wrap it carefully. And actually, she would take the hot water bottle, usually. I remember when the, uh, the one of the curators from uh, the paper collection at MoMA saw some of her work and really loved the contemporary feeling of those great orange lollipops. She has so many different audiences, really. It's not just the, the self-taught. We grew up, actually we moved into a very large brick home in the center of Nashville, in the old city center of Nashville, the year Laura was born. It was recommended that um, Laura be institutionalized, that, that was the only thing to do. And when Mother looked into that to see exactly what that meant, she said there was absolutely no way she was ever going to do that. To the local department store and bought this fabulous blue swimming suit that Laura picked out off the rack that had the floral and the skirt and the big flowers on the top and the skirt. And a few weeks later, this fabulous painting occurs. But it was the piece that sort of jump-started her love and uh, production and desire, I think, was that blue swimming suit. Her home is with other developmentally disabled artists. Three visual artists, an opera singer, and a music composer. Of those six people, three or four at least have a diagnosis of autism. over a period of time, she engages people and brings them in into her world, even though her communication is so limited, it takes a long time to get, to understand what she's saying. And once you do start to pick up on the language, you realize this is an incredibly highly developed intelligence that has something to say and share, and uh, she did it originally through her artwork.